what are the markers that we should be looking at for inflammation? On a standard blood test, that would be things like high sensitivity CRP, homocysteine levels. And then you can also pick up inflammation through things like ferritin as well. CRP, it's just kind of like systemic inflammation. If that's coming back high or if you retest and it's high, is there a more precise way of measuring where that inflammation is coming from? CRP is a pretty crude measurement yeah. of inflammation. And that number can really fluctuate quite a bit depending on whether you exercise or had a rough night, yep. all right? Unfortunately, there are not that many great long-term inflammatory markers. However, there is one that I'd like to mention. It's called the SUPAR test that we offer here. Soluble urokinase plasminogen activator receptor. You'll be hearing more about this test. It is actually the most accurate measure of chronic inflammation that we have. Wow. So this is a test that, you know, as of right now is still kind of under FDA trials and many of the studies performed mostly in Europe, they found that this was the most consistent marker to measure inflammation after post-COVID patients, patients in the ICU and things like that. You can actually think of this marker as a hemoglobin A1C for metabolic function. So that's the number that we use the most often. Some of the biological age tests can pick that up too, such as, you know, glycan age picks up the actual long-term inflammation and the glycosylation of DNA. What is the name of that test again? SUPAR, S-U-P-A-R. SUPAR, okay. Yeah. Soluble urokinase plasminogen activator receptor. Wow. Yeah.